is James Mathers at Cinegear Expo 2018. I'm here with my old friend, Ryan Smith. He's president of K5600, a uh, leading manufacturer of HMI lights, and I'm so glad that people are still making great HMI lights. Tell yeah. us about uh, some of the advantages that we just can't get away from with HMI. Sure. Well, uh, as uh, many of you may know, HMIs have been around for 60 years at this point. Um, it's a full spectrum source, uh, incredibly accurate color um, in terms of the sun, and it's also a 100 lumen per watt point source. Um, and the biggest advantage of that is that you're able to use various optical accessories to get an incredible amount of efficiency and output. So uh, when it comes to the amount of uh, watts coming out of a wall versus the amount of lumens hitting a subject, uh, it's an incredibly good ratio that um, while there may be a lot of other alternative techs that are out there, some of them still have a hard time competing with uh, the big light in the sky. So yeah. that's where HMI comes into play. Can't get that hard point uh, Absolutely. So I mean, if you talk about yeah, a point source with a parabolic <laughs> reflector, yeah. um, you can get an incredibly tight five degree spot where you're maximizing nearly all of the light that's coming uh, or being generated from the source itself. So, yeah. But people have had uh, issues with uh, flicker in the past. Uh, sure. What are you guys doing with flicker now? So in terms of flicker, it, it really has to do with the frequency rate, mostly coming from the ballast, so the power supplies that are being used with the lights themselves. Um, currently on the market available, at least what we have, is 300 hertz and 1,000 hertz, which is generating high frequency pulse rates through the lamps themselves to help stabilize the arc, um, at least in that to that 1,000 frames per second range. Now, anything above that, you still might see some arc wander. Um, but uh, I think at that point you're you're, you're able to get a, a lot of lumens in the in the amount of light that you need to even capture at those frame rates. Yeah, usually when you're shooting source. that high speed, you need th all that power that yeah. only HMIs can give you. Sure. And last year we did a uh, flicker test. Yeah, which was great. And by yours the way. was uh, great all the way up to five thousand. So. Oh, you ended yeah. up getting up that high even. Yeah, great. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 I no, noticed that. No I'll worries. I'll have to go back and study a little <laughs> bit. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> so it's uh, got the uh, DCS seal of. Flicker approval we'll take or non-flicker approval. <laughs> non-flicker <laughs> approval. <laughs> uh, but what's in the future uh, for your units? So currently uh, what we're showing, we debuted at NAB and we're showing here at Cinegear is the new Joker 2 line. Uh, and what that basically has done is revamped the existing Joker that's been around for the past 20 years. Um, it's improved upon some of the things that we've learned and it's also added some additional tech. Uh, mostly being that all the ballasts now include wireless DMX, which as we know is all the rage. Everybody wants to control everything remotely. Uh, so we've tried to put it uh, HMI in a position where it can still be on a set with a, uh, several different sources and still be controlled from a console remotely. Um, in addition, we've turned our 800 and 1600 into reversible HMI and tungsten lights. So by simply removing the rear cap, you can now turn your 1600 into a 2K or your 800 into a 1K. So essentially we've made uh, tungsten pars and daylight pars into the same fixture. So oh. rental houses like that because they can rent light two different ways. Users like it because they can still shoot traditional tungsten, which uh, I hate to say still isn't going anywhere. Um, and then in addition, we, we changed some basic features of the head itself, we eliminated some hardware, made it a lot more user friendly from a serviceability standpoint braking systems, strain reliefs, uh, and really tightened up the package. Is that an example? Actually, there? yeah, I do have one here. So this is Let our- Let me hold your mic so sure. you can have both hands. This is our Joker 400, which actually shrunk in size, if you can believe it or not. And, uh, you know, just added That's some- That's a 400, huh? This is our-, Look, our I thought it was gonna, you were gonna tell me it was a 200. No, it's our cute little 400. And, you know, one, two, two big things that users really love, besides the rear cap removability and tungsten, is the improved braking system. And then the fact that when you change globes, everything's threaded, that you really don't need a tool or a screwdriver to mess with this light anymore. And especially because we have so many accessories that are adaptable to our units, it's just the easeability of being able to change everything in and out quickly. As you know, time is money, uh, even more so than ever nowadays on sets. So, so we've got our Joker 2 line, which is available now uh, in 4, 8, and 16. And then uh, we are targeting IBC for the release, at least of pre-production units, of some, uh, some LED fixtures as well. Oh, I, I bet they'll be good ones, too. Because we, well, you know, there's you a lot of them out there. You didn't jump into it like a lot of people did. No. Uh, and studied I'm, the market. I'm glad we didn't. Um, you know, it's gotten to the point to where it's obviously not going anywhere. Um, and there are some significant advantages to LEDs in their, in their tools, but I think one of the things I'm looking forward to is really um, 
being able to do compares and contrast between the technologies. Uh, it's difficult when you don't have something of your own because it's it, talking about competitors and yeah. other things on the market, regardless of how objective you are. Um, but as we come out uh, and begin coming out with our own lines and we can really talk about sizes and weights and heat dissipation and lumens and what are you really getting out of these tools to whereas, uh, unfortunately, a lot of guys on sets don't have time to test things anymore. It's, it's so quick, the prep days are being eliminated and they just, they take what they get. And uh, being able to educate and show people the differences in the tech and how things operate, I think is going to be key in the future. And uh, actually something you could help with tremendously and, yeah. and have helped with Love tremendously. Yeah. And um, I've always been a big fan of your products, so I'm sure that uh, the LEDs are going to be great and you'll just, uh, it's a different tool in the toolbox. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much, Ryan. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Jim. I appreciate it. Uh, so basically, 400 watt Joker 2, got it with a parabolic reflector, the Beamer 400, which is very easily removable with a thumb screw. And then, in order to change lamps to our either 3200 Kelvin or 5600 Kelvin HMIs, just the threaded ring. And show us the braking. Increased braking system on the side. It's all stainless steel. We noticed it. With our 15-year-old fixtures, great brakes were grinding down. So it's not something you would learn until you had a fixture that was 15 years old. Um, improved strain relief system as well. Same bayonet mounting on the sides and then a triple axis yoke, which gives you a little extra clearance great. for some downward mobility. There you go. Cool.